Good day everyone, for our video presentation for today, I'm going to share with you what is quantitative methods. Its definition, application, strength, and possible weaknesses of using these in conducting your quantitative research. Alright, let's continue learning. Quantitative methods and its definition emphasize objective measurements and the statistical, mathematical, or numerical analysis of data collected through polls, questionnaires, and surveys, or by manipulating pre-existing statistical data using computational techniques. When we say objective measurements, it is something measured consistently. For example, measure the number of steps you take on a day, Measure how well a particular employee performs set tasks in a controlled environment. Controlled environment means that there are certain regulations of how should things should be done. For example, of a controlled environment is a laboratory where room temperature, scheduled use of the laboratory is being controlled. So here, Objective data as a result of objective measurements is not influenced by the judgment or outlooks of others because it is fetched actually and given precisely. Statistical, because we are analyzing mathematical data sets to form a conclusion based on the interpretation of the data collected. Quantitative method is used for quantitative research. When we say quantitative research is a systematic investigation into and study of materials and resources in order to establish facts and reach new conclusions. This quantitative research focuses on gathering numerical data and generalizing it across groups of people or to explain a particular phenomenon. A phenomenon is an observable fact. For example, there is an increase of demand of network connectivity kits because education, schools, and either secondary or tertiary is transitioning from face-to-face -to, -face to virtual online class. That is a phenomenon, a fact. Now, with regards to quantitative research, your goal in conducting study is to determine the relationship between one thing an independent variable and another, the dependent or outcome variable within a population. Just like this image of a plant where water is introduced. We know that water is one of the vital needs of a plant to grow. As labeled in the image, the independent variable is the amount of water. Farmers do give decision on how much water should a plant deserve maybe based on the dryness of the soil or the growth stage of the plant. Amount of water is controlled. It changes over time. When the amount of water changes, the dependent variable, which is the growth of the plant, is affected. Either it grows healthier or overhydrated. Now, based on this image, can you give example on the comment section below of an independent and dependent variable relationship? Because you might find an idea to start conducting a quantitative type of research study. With the era of data technology, quantitative analysis in which quantitative method is part is now considered a better approach to making informed decisions. When can we say that we are providing informed decision? When we base it on facts or information and processes. Next is we will discuss about the strength of using quantitative methods. We have here allows for broader study involving a greater number of subjects and enhancing the generalization of the results. We also have allows for greater objectivity and accuracy of results. 
Generally, quantitative methods are designed to provide summaries of data that supports generalizations about the phenomenon under study. In order to accomplish this, quantitative research usually involves few variables and many cases, and employs prescribed procedures to ensure validity and reliability. Applying well-established standards means that the research can be replicated and then analyzed and compared with similar studies. Summarize vast source of information and make comparisons across categories and over time. And last is we have personal bias can be avoided by keeping a distance from participating subjects and using accepted computational techniques. Aside from presenting you strength of using quantitative methods, we also have possible problems in using quantitative methods. Number one is we have lack of detail. Many people criticize quantitative research because the researchers have very little ability to find out more detail. For example, many Quantitative research methods use questionnaires as a means of finding out percentages of the population that possess certain characteristics or think certain things. Imagine if a questionnaire asks if you wish to vote for orange or lemon fruits in the next planting season, then you want to vote for apple, but not to have the option available to vote for that. You don't have a choice but to only vote between the given option, orange and lemon. This may not seem like a relevant fact, but if 10% of farmers preferred apples to be planted, there will be a massive impact because of the rigid nature of the study. Second is missing variables. The rigid and fixed nature of quantitative research can also result in a relevant variable being missed entirely. If someone was conducting qualitative study into the intelligence levels of children and trying to determine whether firstborn children are more intelligent than all subsequent children, they may measure children's IQ and then note whether they are firstborn, second, or third, or fourth. This may produce a result stating that, according to the statistics, firstborn children are indeed more intelligent and each subsequent child has a lower IQ than the one before. This seems to be a relevant finding, but it overlooks the possible variable that intelligent parents have fewer children. This could mean that the first and second born children have relatively intelligent parents and fifth born children have less intelligent parents. So the conclusion of the study is misleading. In conclusion, quantitative methods is a great way to use data gathered through focus groups, surveys, trend analysis, and case studies to ensure a stronger foundation in deciding within your organization through a deeper understanding of strengths and weaknesses. So thank you very much for watching this short video about the introduction of quantitative methods. For the next videos to come, we will go much deeper learning about quantitative methods. Um, we will learn how to collect data, we will learn how to analyze our collected data, and a lot of um, quantitative methods will be presented so that we could take advantage of learning this method in doing our quantitative research. Good day everyone and see you on the next video.